At this point, our app's UI is functional. You've seen we can add and delete items, and now we have a sheet showing a user interface to create new expenses. However, the app is far from working. Any data placed into add view is completely ignored. And even if it weren't ignored, then it still wouldn't be saved for future times the apps run. We'll tackle those problems in order, starting with actually doing something with the data from add view. We already have properties that store the values from our form. And previously, we added a property to store an expenses object passed in from the content view. We need to put those two things together. We need a button that, when tapped, creates an expense item out of our properties and adds it to the expenses items. Our expense item struct has an integer for its amount, which means we've got to do a little typecasting from a string value of amount. So add this modifier below navigation bar title in add view. Dot navigation bar items, trailing, button, save. If let actual amount equals int self.amount, let item equals expense item, name, self.name, type, self.type, amount, actual amount. Self.expenses.items.append item. Although we have more work to do, I encourage you to run the app now because it's actually coming together. You can now show the ad view, end some details, press save, then swipe to dismiss, and you'll see your new item in the list. That means our data synchronization is working perfectly. Both our Swift UI views are reading from the same list of expense items. Now try launching the app again, and you'll immediately hit our second problem. Any data you add isn't stored, meaning that everything starts blank every time you relaunch the app. This is obviously a pretty terrible user experience, but thanks to the way we have expense as a separate class, it's actually not that hard to fix. We're going to leverage four important technologies to help us save and load data in a clean way. First, there's the codable protocol, which will allow us to archive all expense items ready to be stored. Then there's user defaults, which will let us save and load the archive data. Next, a custom initializer for the expenses class. So, when we make an instance of it, we load any saved data from user defaults. And finally, a did set property observer on the items property of expenses, so that whenever an item gets added or removed, we'll write out changes. Let's tackle writing the data first. We already have this property in the expenses class. At published of our items is an array of expense item. That's where we store all the expense item structs that have been created. And that's also where we're going to attach our property observer to write out changes as they happen. This takes four steps in total. We need to create an instance of JSON encoder that'll do the work of converting our data to JSON. We ask that to try encoding our items array, and then we can write that to user defaults using the key items. So modify the items property with this. Did set let encoder equals JSON encoder. If let encoder equals try question mark encoder dot encode items. User defaults dot standard dot set encoded for key items. Now, if you're following along, you'll notice that code doesn't actually compile. And if you're following along closely, you'll have noticed I said this process takes four steps while only listing three. The problem is that the encoder.encode method can only archive objects that conform to the codable protocol. Remember, conforming to codable is what asks the compiler to generate code for us to be able to handle archiving and unarchiving of objects. If we don't add a conformance of that, our code won't build. Helpfully, we don't have to do any work other than add codable to expense item, like this. Swift already includes codable conformances for the UUID, string, and int properties of expense item, and so it's able to make expense item conform automatically as soon as we ask for it. With that change, we've written all the code needed to make sure our items are saved when the user adds them. However, it's not effective by itself. The data might be saved, but it isn't loaded again when the app relaunches. To solve that, and also to make our code compile again, we have to implement a custom initializer. This will, first, attempt to read the items key from user defaults, Second, create an instance of JSON decoder, which is the counterpart of JSON encoder that lets us go from JSON data to Swift objects. Third, ask the decoder to convert the data we received from user defaults into an array of expense item objects. Fourth, 
If that worked, assign the resulting array to items and exit. Fifth, otherwise set items to an empty array. So add this initializer to the expenses class now. In it, if let items equals user defaults dot standard dot data for key items. Let decoder equals JSON decoder. If let decoder equals try question mark decoder dot decode an array of expense item dot self from items. Self dot items equals decoded and return. Otherwise, self dot items equals an empty array. The two key parts of that code are the data for key items line, which attempts to read whatever is in items as a data object, and try question mark decode dot decode array of expense item dot self from items, which does the actual job of unarchiving a data object into an array of expense item objects. Now it's common to do a bit of a double take when you first see array of expense item dot self. What does the dot self mean? Well, if we just use array of expense item, Swift would want to know what we meant. Are we trying to make a copy of the class? Were we planning to reference a static property or method? Did we perhaps mean to create an instance of the class? To avoid confusion, to say that we mean we're referring to the type itself, known as a type object, we write dot self after it. And now that we have both loading and saving in place, you should be able to use the app. It's not finished quite yet though. Let's add some final polish.